How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and I finally upgraded my production van to fit my workflow as a cinematographer. A lot of people have been upgrading to cargo vans lately and for good reason. In our industry, equipment takes up a lot of space and you have to consider how you're going to transport camera, lighting, grip, and oftentimes carts. I rocked an SUV for years and it served me well for the time that I had it, but it was only until I purchased my sky panel kit that I realized it was time to upgrade because the case itself took up nearly half of the trunk space and I still needed to account for all of my other equipment. When thinking about vans, I originally wanted a high roof, but after seeing one in person, it seemed way too big for what I needed. Another big consideration was actually parking garages. A lot of work at the time was done at casinos on the strip, so having a low clearance was pretty important to me. I did consider the Transit Connect, but I wanted a little bit more space to grow into. I eventually settled on the Ford Transit 130 inch wheelbase low roof since it was able to fit into a majority of parking garages and had plenty of cargo space to upfit. The original idea was to build out a one-ton package that I'd be able to rent out, but after some reflection, it was important to remember that I'm primarily a DP, so I wanted to focus on having a camera van rather than a grip truck. I always preach using the right tool for the job, and I'm always going out with different gear because every job has different needs, so it didn't really make sense for much to actually live on the van. Right now, the only thing that actually stays in the van are things that I constantly use or extra camera accessories that are just always good to have on hand. So as I mentioned, the only things that actually live on the van are things that I just generally always use on basically every job or things that I always wish I had but never usually have with me at the time. So on the shelves on the top here, we have eight by rags and six by rags and then ears for frames. And then obviously that's where I store all my tape. On the second shelf here, we have uh, some BNC, some stingers and just some regular general small grippage um, like Mayfers, Cardellini's quackers, platypuses, whatever you call them. Um, back here, I just store some Aperture MCs. And then down here, um, it's a little bit thinner just because I had to install this E-Track here. So down here, I'm able to fit two six by fr or two eight by frames and one six by frame. And then towards the bottom of the shelf, right underneath, I have just ex some expendables. So some scrap duvetine, a roll of duvetine, a couple rolls of NDs and cinefoil. And on this back shelf here, um, I have other just camera related accessories. So on the top shelf here, this is where I usually store my matte box and NDs and other filter, my filter case. And then also my AC bag lives up top there, which is nice because I have everything I need up there. Um, this bottom shelf is where I have a, a nice drawer kit and I had to mount the lip upside down. So I wasn't quite sure what to do with this little space. So for now, Baby Yoda is just going to be supervising for a little bit. Um, and then this uh, drawer is nice because it latches. So whenever the vehicle is in motion, the drawers stay in place and then you can unlatch them and then they unlock. So up here in the top drawer, we have just all your kind of basic camera nuts and bolts. So extra quarter 20 tripod screws, three eighths, some 50 millimeter rods, extra camera plates extra tripod plates because let's face it there's been a point where we've all forgotten our tripod plate at home second drawer is just a couple other mounting hardware we have some velcro ties some bongo ties and of an a box and just other miscellaneous stuff um, down here is where i kind of store all of my random um, kind of baggies and I used to always carry all of these inside my AC bag so now they actually have a place to live. These are just makeup bags and they all kind of contain different items like this is just kind of accessory mounting hardware. I have one for video cables, I have one for power cables. So each bag has its own kind of designated purpose so um, that all kind of lives here along with a follow focus. And then towards the bottom here these are just other smaller thinner items that are just kind of generally just good to have on hand. So I have a power strip, I have some AC pouches and some harnesses, uh, ethernet cable, HDMI cables, just random miscellaneous stuff. Um, I have a rubber mat, these are always great. Um, so I'll actually use this usually in the van if I'm ever working off of here for an extended period of time, I'll lay this down and then I'm able to actually kneel on it. And this is actually great for in the field too if you're ever doing a lot of B-roll or whatever um, and you're doing a lot of stuff on your knees. I'll have this. This is also another great thing that I love is the purple cushion. So this is designed for chairs. So if I'm doing an extended amount of sitting on an Apple box or whatever, I'll just throw this on and whatever you sit on will be super comfortable. 
And then towards the bottom here, we just have a family of apple boxes and then my Benaral hi-hat that just lives down here. Now, I'll be totally upfront here. I'm by no means a crafty person, so I had everything professionally installed. I'd much rather pay someone and make it look nice rather than doing a janky job myself. If you're interested in looking up any of these parts to use in your own build, I'll overlay the model number towards the bottom of the video. I decided to go with a ramp as opposed to a lift gate for a few reasons. First, it didn't make a lot of sense with a low roof van and lift gates are sort of a process to operate. With a ramp, things are a lot quicker and there's no maintenance, so I don't have to worry about getting getting it serviced every year or having a lift gate break down on me. I ended up going with a three section spring assisted ramp from National Fleet Products. It's integrated behind the rear doors and can swivel out in case you don't want to deploy the ramp to access the cargo. I used to have this old ramp that I'd have to set up manually and it made a ton of noise and on a hot summer day throwing around a 90 pound piece of scorching hot metal doesn't really spark joy. Worst of all, it took up so much space and made it really difficult storing extra gear because you weren't really able to stack items on top of it. Lately, I've become a big fan of using industrial laundry hampers to haul gear, which is what rental houses actually use to deliver gear and makes things really efficient if you have a van. Mine are from Uline and they have a bunch of different sizes and material options. The 12 bushel canvas is a great compact size that's great for hauling cases and easily maneuvers through standard doorways, while the heavy duty poly box truck works great for grip gear because it won't crack or tear from the abuse of C-stands. For our on location work, I'll load up a hamper with everything I need so gear is self-contained in a small cart and I'll usually have a grip with me so in those situations I'll load camera equipment on the innovative and have my grip take the hamper. This makes load in and load out incredibly fast. I know the struggle of stacking C-stands in a regular car. It's not fun so being able to roll everything in on wheels makes life a million times easier. It also makes life much easier when packing gear at home since I'm able to just roll everything to where it needs to go on the shelf. The partition was a basic door kit from Adrian Steel, and I got one with a door in case I needed to transport longer items like speed rail or a roll of seamless. A bulkhead is super important because it keeps the driver and passenger safe from shifting cargo. If you get into an accident, a gold mount battery traveling at 40 miles per hour can easily kill someone, so don't sleep on a good partition. There's just enough space for me to leave my flags in between the shelves and partition, so it stays pretty secure without any additional bungees or tie downs. It also gives a little bit of extra added protection against the partition. There are two shelf units, one 50 inch and another 32 inch. They're user adjustable and I've added E-Track to the middle shelf to secure carts. I wanted to add shelves so I could have a flat surface to tie down carts since the wheel wells make it a little bit awkward and uneven. They have a depth of 13 inches and can perfectly fit milk crates or even a standard 1510 Pelican case. The goal is to minimize shifting cargo so you can make turns without your gear just falling apart in the back. Lately, I've been using these great retractable ratchet straps which eliminate excess cable and keep things really tidy. You can find them on Amazon and if you're interested in checking them out, I've left an affiliate link in the description below. I went with Stabiligrip composite flooring, which I'm super happy with. My old floor was a terrible rubber mat that would constantly leave indentations because the material was super malleable. This made it really difficult to roll carts around because after I'd arrived to a location, the wheels would end up sinking into the floor. With Stabiligrip, carts are super easy to maneuver and don't leave any impressions. Another plus is that it's super easy to clean. A Swiffer mop easily wipes down any accidental spills or foot tracks. The wall and ceiling liners are Duratherm, which are super solid. They even have a video on their YouTube channel of their liner taking an axe without batting an eye. Not that I'm planning on doing any axe throwing, but I constantly ping the walls and ceiling whenever I load stands and other grip equipment into the van. The liner is also insulated, which should help with the interior temperature during hot Vegas summers. I always thought the area between the cabin seats were such a waste of space, so I also added a center console which has a few USB ports and extra storage for items such as a laptop or clipboard. I also installed a digital rear view mirror that uses a camera to display what's behind me. It also has a second front facing camera and since it's a dash cam, it records both angles to a micro SD card in case I need it. If you appreciate my content here on YouTube, consider checking out my Patreon where I post longer form BTS and other industry tips that have helped me along the way. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way. Is a cargo van right for you? Well, it's really hard to say, it just depends on your workflow. I was at the point where I wasn't able to bring all the equipment I needed 
needed to do my job, so it was an easy sell for me. I really love my cargo van, and it's interesting how dependent I've become on it for my work. It's pretty much essential for smaller crew jobs where I'm the one providing the majority of equipment. If you're interested in checking out some other great van builds, I'll leave some links in the description. Threefold actually modified a retired ambulance into their production grip truck, and it's super awesome. One of the obvious benefits of owning a van is the increased capacity to rent. If I were stuck with an SUV, I'd be limited to a very small amount of GE, but with a van, I'm able to bring pretty much everything I need, which equates to more rentals I'm able to add on the invoice. It's also super handy just to have just for everyday life occurrences like moving or transporting oversized items from the store and not having to worry about banging up your personal vehicle from gear. I could maybe see myself upgrading to a high roof in the future, but until then, I'm more than happy with my current setup. If you have any questions, obviously feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.